All right, let me give you one more demonstration and show you how these things work again. First, I'm going to arc it out. Do, do, do. There you go. We're down to nothing. Now it's going to start charging. And as you can see, the uh, voltage is going up. That means the capacitors are filling up. And I'm going to turn on a light just to speed that up. All right. So should be going a bit faster now. And up to 0 0.5, 0 0.6. I'm just going to let this uh, run for a while so you can see how long it takes to store these little caps up with uh, this light running. And uh, might as well turn the other one on boost it even more. Uh, of course, now you can't see. So I'm going to adjust the uh, light settings here. There we go. That's better. And you can see a little EMF detector going off. Now I was going to show you uh, everything on my little pocket oscilloscope. But while testing, I think I broke the darn thing. I think I burned it out. I accidentally connected the signal generator to the AC power. I should have connected this to the AC power. And it was not even AC power. It's just the, the signal that I'm uh, using. Anyways, I started up the Wimshurst generator and the screen went out. And now I can't get it to come back. So if I ever get this thing to work again, I'll show you or buy a new one. But I'm... This thing's kind of cheap, so probably didn't have any circuit protection and probably blew it out. Oh well. Alright, we're up to 2.4 volts and rising. So I'm going to come back in one second here and we'll give you another demonstration of uh, those LEDs. Alright, up to 3 volts, and rising. So I hope this uh, <clears throat> proves to you, shows you that uh, it's not just radio frequency signals that this, this circuit uh, will receive and uh, get a signal from and create a charge, get a charge, but uh, any electromagnetic uh, frequency or radiation uh, can be used to charge these things if you've got an antenna. And the antenna I'm using is not, it's not a big antenna. It's just like your standard little FM antenna. So, yeah, I was using my house antenna to do my other demonstrations, which actually works really good because it's really, it's big. So it can pick up more, uh, more energy. And well, we have to 3.2 volts, so <clears throat> that should be plenty to operate the LED. And curious to see just how high this thing will go. I'm going to move the voltage over here. This circuit should be charging as well, although the output is going to be should be about half of this other one because. Uh, it doesn't have the doubled up circuit in series. So, well, we're up with 3 volts here too. So this LED should also work. So I haven't been flipping that one off and on, so it's had more time to charge. I've been turning this one off and on and draining it, so uh, it has to recharge. They should have about the same capacity because these are 100 UF, but they're uh, 35 volt. And these are also 100 UF, but they're uh, 50 volts, which, you know, could make a difference. Um, but because these are basically in series, it cuts that uh, total um, storage in half. So here you've got 100 and 100, so you basically got 200, because those are in parallel. These are in parallel, these are in parallel, but these two together are in series. So you've got... Uh, your 200 here and your 200 here, but because it's in series, that knocks it down, back down to 100. So you got about 100 uh, 
something like that, or 200, I can't remember, so get, hold on, <laughs> 200 here, and 200 here, so instead of having 400, you just, I think you still have 200, maybe you have 100, I can't remember, anyways, I could also explain why the, these two circuits perform differently, and so I'm just going to turn this little light on, see if we get anything, yep, see, got a little flash, and the voltage is dropping back down to 1.4, six five it'll probably just hover around there because it's just not going to get much more because the circuits open turn the switch on or off I'm sorry and it begins to rise again do the same thing over here real quick and we've got 3.8 here I'm going to turn these lights off so you can just, I'll just bring it a little closer so you can see, see if you can, alright, there you go, nice little flash out of it, goes to 2.4, and see I can get this thing to flash over and over again, in fact I'm just holding it down, it's getting enough electricity, pretty much to keep that thing going dimly so hope that gives you a better idea of how this works and if I wait just a little bit 2.4 you know that voltage goes up and you'll get a slightly brighter flash and then it'll start to uh, burn dimly again those little capacitors get some more energy stored up Little flash and then it dims down. There you go. All right. I hope that helps. And thanks for watching my video. Hope you liked my demonstration. I'm glad I didn't uh, shock myself. Although I'm disappointed that my little silly scale burned out. But live and learn. It wasn't big deal is kind of a cheapy so there you go enjoy hey folks I'm back uh, I know I mentioned that uh, basically anything that's electronic will produce an electromagnetic field uh, radiation that your Tesla air circuit can pick up and convert into DC power uh, stores in those capacitors. Uh, so here's a toaster oven, my toaster oven. I use it a lot uh, and I'm going to give you a little demonstration. I got my little EMF detector here just to show you that uh, this thing's going to produce a, a field. And just turn it on here and start her up. As you can see immediately starts producing a very high reading there so this is my oven <laughs> you can put this next to a refrigerator coffee maker an electric fan anything that uh, uses electricity more than likely is going to produce an electromagnetic field and you put a conductor in that field and if there's motion in the right direction you're going to get current just like a generator thanks